Apple has just released iOS 16.1.1 to the general public just over two weeks after the release of iOS 16.1. Now, Apple did also release iPadOS 16.1.1 and macOS 13.0.1 alongside this iOS release. Now, if we take a look at the size of this update, it's a pretty small update. So right here coming from 16.1 on my iPhone 14 Plus, it was just over 350 megabytes, but that will vary depending on your device and the version you are coming from. Now, if we go into our settings to check out the build number, general about 16.1.1, we can see the new build number here is 20B101. And the modem firmware down here is at 1.13.03. All right, so now what's new here in iOS 16.1.1? And Apple was pretty vague in the release notes, actually very vague because they didn't tell us anything that has been addressed. It just says this update includes bug fixes and security updates so we do know about the security updates that did give us more insight on that but as far as the bug fixes go they didn't really elaborate besides just saying bug fixes but i do believe the biggest reason for this was due to a bug that was affecting the sk ad network and the sk ad network is apple's advertising framework that allows advertisers to measure the success of their ad campaigns and there was an issue that first appeared on apple's system status page last week and it said that an update was coming and now that 16.1.1 has been released it shows that it has been resolved as of today at one o'clock when this update first came out. So that is one thing that has for sure been fixed with 16.1.1. Now the next one is much more significant and that is Wi-Fi. So a lot of people have had issues with Wi-Fi on 16.1 specifically. And I would imagine that 16.1.1 fixes those Wi-Fi connectivity issues. So if you had issues with your Wi-Fi connection dropping, especially when in FaceTime calls or just randomly throughout the iOS, if you had any type of issue with Wi-Fi, those very well could be addressed here with 16.1.1, even though Apple did not mention it in the release notes. And then something else that we were promised in November is emergency SOS via satellite for the iPhone 14 devices. And that unfortunately has not been added with 16.1.1 so apple again did say this is coming in november in an update and it still shows that on their site so does that mean another update is coming this month to add support for emergency SOS via satellite? I guess you'll just have to subscribe to find out. No, but seriously, it seems like Apple may have to push out another update to enable this feature, or they're just going to push it server side and it's already kind of baked into the code. Apple just has to push a button on their side and that will enable this feature for the iPhone 14 series. But as of 16.1.1, still no emergency SOS via satellite. Now, another issue that was affecting quite a few users has to do with the alarm widget on the lock screen. So you can see there, mine does show 7 8 am but for a lot of users it did not show an alarm properly it would just say no alarm even when you had an alarm actually you know enabled if you had an alarm set it would not show that so that very well could be fixed here in 16.1.1 Again, that issue was not affecting me. I am seeing it properly here, so that very well could be fixed with 16.1.1 as well. Another bug that's been fixed has to do with the phone application. And when you're in a phone call and the phone is up to your ear, for whatever reason in 16.1, you are not able to adjust the volume properly over here with the volume rockers, but that has been addressed and it now works in 16.1.1. So I tried this with a FaceTime call to myself and I was able to adjust the volume with the volume rockers while on a phone call when the phone is up to my ear. So if you had that issue, that has also been fixed. And then something else I wanted to mention is that Colorado users can now add their license to the wallet application. So if you wanted a digital driver's license, you can now do that. Just tap the plus on the wallet application and then go to driver's license or state ID. And you can see that Colorado has joined Arizona and Maryland and you could add your driver's license or state ID to use at select TSA checkpoints. And just to clarify, this does not require I iOS 16.1.1. This was just pushed out server side from Apple. It just so happened to be around the same time as the software update. Now this update also patches two security vulnerabilities. So you can see there are two of them right here and both affect the same area of the iPhone. So they're libxml2 and you can see the impact is a remote user may be able to cause unexpected app termination or arbitrary code execution. And the description for the fix for the first CVE is an integer over 
overflow was addressed through improved input validation. And the second CVE just says this issue was addressed with improved checks. So as always, if you would like to keep your device as secure as possible, it's always a good idea to update when Apple publishes these CVEs on their security contents page. Now, as far as the performance goes, I would not expect any performance gains really at all with 16.1.1. Again, this is mainly just a bug fix update. Apple has not touched the performance side for this update. They haven't really adjusted anything that would lead to improved performance. So I would not expect any gains here with this update. However, I did still run a Geekbench test and you can see we scored a 1742 on the single core and a 4584 on the multi-core. And if we compare that to 16.1, you can see that we do have a higher single core, but a slightly lower multi-core score. And then as far as the battery life goes, again, don't expect a fix for battery drain or don't really expect any type of improvements to the battery with a double point update like this where we only have bug fixes so apple again just like the performance they didn't touch anything with the battery in this update so i would not expect any type of magical change to battery drain or anything like that on your device so with all that being said should you update to ios 16.1.1 and i would say that if you're already on 16.1 then you might as well update i mean you're going to have a more secure device with those security patches and you might even notice some minor bug fixes that you're facing on 16.1 and like I just said you know you're not really going to see any type of change to the performance or the battery life so it's not like updating is going to break your battery life you're going to have battery drain and you know you're going to have all kind of bugs after updating that's not going to happen with this one however if you're on the iOS 16.2 betas there's no reason to downgrade to 16.1.1 I would just stick to those 16.2 betas until we get to the final release of 16.2 and speaking Speaking of future iOS software updates, let's talk about what's next for Apple. So next up now, I think could very well be an iOS 16.1.2. So I would not have thought that was possible until this update came out and we still don't have that emergency SOS via satellite feature. So I think a 16.1.2 is possible sometime in November. Now it looks like it's probably going to be within the last two weeks of November. So I would not expect anything next week. But maybe the 21st or the 28th, the week of those two days, we could see a 16.1.2. And then as far as iOS 16.2, we should expect to see that sometime in December. We are currently in the beta stages for 16.2 and the final release is expected in December, according to Mark Gurman. So that is iOS 16.1.1, a very minor update with a couple of security patches along with a fix for the SK ad network bug and hopefully a fix for those Wi-Fi issues that seem to be pretty widespread for iOS 16.1 users. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, as always, I would appreciate if you give it a thumbs up. Also, make sure to subscribe for more iOS 16 coverage. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you soon.